What's up guys, Doug Polk here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a hand from the Poker Stars Shark Cage between Chris Moneymaker and Sergio Garcia. But before we jump into that, I want to quickly announce a giveaway that I'm doing. Scoop is here and I'm going to be giving away 5% of my net profits on the series. We already booked a win here on Sunday coming in at $5,300, so we got a little bit already on the plate, but we're going to have to see how these big tournaments go. If you guys want to enter, you can have an entry for multiple different things, generally just following my socials. You can check it out in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the action. Six. Mr. Garcia is raising. Is that a 9-6 raise, or is that actually a real raise, sir? I don't know. <laughs> Real-ish? If I tell you, I have to kill you. <laughs> Please don't kill me. That's not very polite. It's a drastic move. Uh, seriously. Our hand begins with Sergio Garcia opening it up under the gun with Ace Deuce suited. This is standard. You're going to want to have a lot of these suited aces in your range. Because you have an ace, your opponents are less likely to have a strong hand. You have a lot of equity against a lot of different holdings that your opponent can play. The action then folds to Chris Moneymaker in the big blind, who looks down Jack-9 suited. Facing this size open, he has a crystal clear call, which he makes, and let's take a flop. So Chris calls and flops a pair of nines. Chris Moneymaker continues running like a fine Swiss watch. Fifty-five. Sergio bets with just ace high. Oh yeah. Chris calls. The flop comes 10-9-3 rainbow, giving Chris Moneybaker middle pair and Sergio Garcia the backdoor not flush draw. Now in this situation, Chris checks over to Sergio. He has a pretty interesting decision. He can decide to go ahead and bet the flop with the backdoor not flush draw, a couple turns that might give him some wheel draws and also an overcard, or he can check and look to play some later streets. I think both options are totally fine. He does decide to go ahead and bet, and he bets a hefty size. We're talking about an almost full-sized pot bet, and the action's back over to Moneymaker. With middle pair, you should be going nowhere here. When you have a 10 or a 9, you're going to be calling. If I had a 3, I might consider some factors like, do I have a backdoor flush draw? Otherwise, I might choose to let it go because this size isn't very favorable for you in the big blind. Now, he also can choose to call here with some hands like Queen Jack, Jack 8, or 8 7, but those hands should also look to sometimes check raise the flop. It's worth noting that on this stack size exactly, he might choose to call those hands because if he check raises, he could very easily get jammed on. Sergio does not have a lot of chips behind, so he might choose to call with open enders and then raise with some gut shot type hands, where if he gets jammed on, it's not going to be a big deal. Anyway, Chris does make the call, and let's take the turn. And an ace on the turn gives Sergio top pair. Finally, someone else catches up. Hey, uh, James, Chris is from Tennessee, but at the moment he's more like Ninacy, huh? If we ignore him, he might go away. The turn is one of the three best cards in the deck for Sergio. He turns top pair on an ace. Now Chris Moneymaker checks middle pair and can't be too happy with what's developing. With top pair, it's kind of an interesting spot here for Sergio. He certainly could bet, but if he bets every ace he has on the turn, and ace deuce is his worst ace, then he'll never have top pair when he checks back. In this spot, stronger players will oftentimes mix in a check so that their check back range can have a few aces. Don't get me wrong, in general when you turn top pair you should keep firing, but you want to occasionally mix in some checks so that if your opponent gets too aggressive and tries to bluff you or overbet against you, you have some hands that can play well against that strategy. Also, let's say that Moneymaker does have a draw, then if he checks back with a top pair, he might induce some of those hands to bluff on the river, thus giving you a very profitable river call. Also, if he does decide to check the river, Moneymaker check the river, then he can bet with his top pair and work in some bluffs as well. This is a really good play to make. So he decides to check back the turn, and let's take the river. Chris checks. Chris has played this super passive. Sergio should think it's safe to value bet. Oh. He bets. Because you know where my cards are. <laughs> I do. I don't want to know where they just were, though. He's playing value. Which one was the one on the bottom? I don't remember. Do you think he really doesn't remember, or do you think he's quoting rounders? 
Sorry, Joe, I don't remember. Wait a minute. Chris's clock is running. Ten second warning. He plays a time bank chip. Four seventy five. Yes. Wow, I wasn't expecting this. The river comes a king, which is a little bit of an interesting card. Now, if either player had Queen Jack, they have the nuts, but it's not too likely Sergio has that hand. If you bet Queen Jack on the flop, you're mainly going to look to continue barreling on the turn. Chris Moneymaker, however, could definitely have Queen Jack, and on the stack size, he might not want to play it as a raise in the flop, meaning he could quite easily have 16 combinations of Queen Jack. So in this situation, it makes sense for Chris to start having some traps. If he had Queen Jack here in the big blind, you might want to check it over to your opponent so that if they river to king or they turn an ace and trapped it, then when they bet, you can stack them by check raising. When he does have his hand here though, middle pair or fourth pair, I like a check. He's got enough other hands that are worse he could bluff with like jack eight or eight seven, or maybe even a hand like queen eight of a backdoor flush draw. It's also possible for him to have some threes on the flop that had a backdoor flush draw and now could possibly bluff over as well. His hand is certainly too strong to bluff and obviously not good enough to value bet. After Chris checks, now it's time for Sergio to bet and get some value. When your opponent takes a line like this where they check call the flop, turn goes check check and they check the river, typically they're gonna have hands like a 10 or a nine because they're not gonna have many aces or kings that call in the flop. This makes this spot a very good situation for the early position raiser because they can have a lot of these strong hands, the big blind just doesn't. Now when the big blind checks and faces a bet, he's probably gonna have to call with a lot of his tens. The reason is if he doesn't call with his tens, he's gonna end up folding with too many hands and then the player that bet the flop and checked back can look to bluff aggressively. So in this spot, if you face a bet, you're probably going to want to call with your 10s and maybe look to fold your 9s. Now, Sergio decides to bet the river. His size seems pretty reasonable to me, and the action's back over on Chris Moneymaker. Now, in this situation, Chris Moneymaker has fourth pair. He's got better hands to call, and he doesn't really have to call with his 9s. If he calls his 10s and his 9s, he's going to be a bit of a station and not fold enough. Remember, in every spot, you do want to work in some folds, so a 9 is not a hand you have to call down with. However, there is a third option. You can decide to turn your hand into a bluff and raise, representing Queen Jack. Well, what kinds of hands make sense to do that with? You typically are going to want to pick ones that aren't good enough to call, like in this situation, 10. You're also going to want to have a queen or a jack yourself so you can block queen jack and you also might like to have a pair that could block some potential trap hands like maybe you know ace nine or nine nine and he blocks that as well this is basically one of the best possible hands that he can use to raise i mean it doesn't get that much better than this and then you're starting to get into hands where he should just call the river anyway Chris Moneymaker does decide to bump it up to 475,000, and I'm not a big fan of this size. He's leaving him something around 30 or 40K behind. If you're gonna raise someone 90, 95% of their stack, just put them in. I thought he was thinking about calling. Awesome. You know where my cards are? No. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna look. The old river bluff raise. We have not seen much of this. And we're going to see our first cage visit of the season. And somebody's about to pocket two grand. When Sergio gets check raised here, he cannot be a happy camper. His opponent is saying, I've either got Queen Jack or maybe a hand like a strong two pair or a set. But really, he's representing Queen Jack. Now, in this situation, you're going to have to call with hands that you might not be comfortable calling. An ace is actually a pretty strong hand within your range, considering you can have some bluffs. And you could also be betting with a hand like King Queen or King Jack that checked the turn and then rivered second pair and went for some value. So when you have an ace, it might be a pretty good candidate to call. It's worth noting, however, that King Queen and King Jack might end up being stronger calls, unless you think your opponent's check raising a lot of two pairs, because you block Queen Jack with those hands and you don't with ace deuce. But one thing I can certainly say is when you play a hand strong enough on the turn to where you decide to make it one of your strongest checks and the river doesn't change the board too much, you generally speaking want to bet call when your opponent check raises you. The reason is because if you don't call that raise after betting, then your opponent can try and bluff you aggressively and you're simply not going to have enough hands to call. 
So I'd probably like to see Sergio make a call here. Let's see if he can make it. This is why we're watching kids, spots like these. Definitely my favorite part of the Pokestars.com shark cage. Not cool. Chris is going to the cage. Got him. Wow! <laughs> what? That's Come on. the spot he tried to bluff? Ace deuce for three of aces. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> See, this is why famous people just need to stick to what they're good at. You know? I mean, look at this hand. Okay, the pre-flop open was acceptable. That was fine. But then the flop. Actually, actually, the flop was okay too. A little bit big, but I mean, it was relatively okay. The turn, though, you could really see that this guy is an amateur. No, actually, the turn was fine. He worked in a trap. Okay, but the river. I mean, the river was really the street where this guy went crazy. I mean, value betting top pair? Not letting your opponent bluff you? My God, he played this hand great. Okay, that's it. If golf players can come into poker and play excellent... What's left? What's there? What's left? Well, I guess there's nothing left, guys. Um, it was great. We had a good run. Uh, this is gonna be my last video. Uh, you know, there's no money left in poker. Everything's uh, everything's solved. So, yeah. See you guys never. Peace. Katie, do we have any golf clubs? Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I'm gonna be playing in the $25,000 scoop high roller right here on YouTube. Last fall, I played in the 10K high roller and won 440,000, and we're looking to top it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.